Well, hello there everyone and welcome to Jason Explains Things. In this video, you're about to see everything you're gonna need to do to your truck every 5,000 miles, pretty much regardless of total mileage. We're going to tackle changing the oil, checking all fluids and filters, rotating the tires, inspecting the brakes, and resetting the maintenance light. Let's get started with the oil change. FYI, check the description for links for all tools and parts you're gonna see in this video. For tools, you'll need the following. A 3 8 inch ratcheting wrench, socket extensions, a 10 millimeter socket, a 14 millimeter socket, and a 3 8 torque wrench. You'll also need a drain pan, a funnel, and an oil filter housing wrench. The oil filter housing wrench and funnel are from a kit from Motivex Tools out of Puyallup, Washington. The kit also comes with an oil filter housing drain tool that is much better than the throwaway tool that comes with your OEM filter. That recommendation isn't sponsored. I paid full price on Amazon, but I love using it. Don't forget gloves and paper towels. For parts and supplies, you'll need six to seven quarts of 0W20 full synthetic oil. I'm using Haviland Pro RS. More about why this oil rocks soon. I'm also using an OEM oil filter and OEM oil plug gasket. First, run your engine for five minutes so the oil drains efficiently. Next, depending on what type of skid plate you have, either remove the skid plate or remove the access doors to get at the filter and drain plug. Quick shout out to CBI Off-Road Fabrication for this awesome aluminum skid plate. Now this and I believe the TRD Pro style skid plate both have these access doors so you don't actually have to take the skid plate off when you do oil changes. If you have the kind of the thin steel one, you will have to take it off. If you want more information on the skid plate, subscribe for a video coming up about it along with an upgraded skid plate for the gas tank and I will have a link in the description if you want to buy one. Remove the oil drain plug with a 14 millimeter socket and drain the oil into a pan. Hilariously, I discovered an issue with my drain pan. It has these ridges in it that are supposed to help the oil flow towards the hole, but in my case, the oil hit it directly and it shot out of the drain pan all over my floor. Super cool! After the oil has started draining for a while, now remove the oil cap in the engine bay. If you remove it beforehand, there's a high risk of the oil shooting out too quickly and escaping your drain pan. That'd be weird. Once all the oil is drained, install the plug with a new gasket and torque to 30 foot-pounds. I need a lift so oil changes are easier. <laughs> Next, remove the oil filter cap plug. All you need to do this is a 3 8 extension. Next, you gotta drain the oil out of the oil filter housing. So you can either use your throwaway tool, but I'm not gonna use this because it stinks. So I'm gonna be using the Motivex uh, tool instead. You simply thread the tool into the oil filter housing and then to drain, you're gonna tw twist this up. The oil should be coming out here. Oh, that is awesome. Next, remove the filter cap using the filter cap wrench. Ta-da! Toss the old oil filter and O-rings and replace them with the new ones. Also make sure that the new filter is seated fully into the housing. Be sure to line up the O-rings into the groove properly and lubricate them with oil. Now install your filter cap. Torque to 18 foot-pounds. Install the last O-ring that goes underneath the filter cap plug and lubricate it with oil. Then install the cap plug, torquing to just 10 foot-pounds. Okay, time to pour in the new oil. And to do that, I'm gonna be using the Motivex funnel that screws right into the fill port and completely uh, removes the possibility of making a mess, at least another one. The oil capacity of the 3.5 liter V6 is about 6.2 quarts. So what we're gonna do, pour in all six quarts rate we got right here, then we're gonna run the engine, check for leaks, and then we'll top it off to the second mark on the dipstick. Now, while I do that process, let me tell you guys about Havilland Pro RS. Haviland Pro RS Full Synthetic Oil is a top tier performance oil that helps maximize engine performance and fuel economy because it resists thickening over time. 
It's made of 25% sustainably sourced plant-based oils. While it has all the performance benefits of a premium full synthetic oil, it also provides environmental benefits like outstanding fuel economy, emission control, and the fact that it's a USDA certified bio-based product. But most important to me, it exceeds the latest and most demanding industry and automaker standards so you can be sure your engine is protected. I also personally love the easily recyclable packaging. Thanks, Avalon, for showing my channel some love and sponsoring this video. And we are done. So last steps, you wanna make sure you read full on the dipstick. You wanna reinstall your uh, skid plate covers and or skid plate if you have the stock one. And it's as simple as that. Do this process enough times and this all becomes kind of oddly relaxing and fun. And you get the peace of mind of knowing that you know it's been done right and nothing has been rushed through or screwed up like shops have done to me in the past. <laughs> Jiffy Lubin, Walmart, <laughs> suck at oil changes. <laughs> Excuse me, Ew, that was weird. Another important 5,000 mile maintenance interval item. Okay, wow, that's a lot, that's quite, why'd you write that? Who wrote this? Another important maintenance item to do around every 5,000 miles is rotating your tires. Now, how you rotate your tires depends on the type of tires you have, specifically meaning are they directional or not? Can you run the tires on either side of the vehicle and can they rotate that way or that way? I have BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires and they are not directional, meaning you can run them on either side of the truck. And most tires like this are this way. So what I'm about to do is probably what you're gonna wanna do, but check it. So if your tires are not directional like mine, you are gonna want to do the rearward cross pattern uh, rotation. Here's a graphic on how that works. Your two rear tires are going to move directly forward and your front tires are going to move to the back but on the opposite side. Does it make sense, Chris? Sure. <laughs> yeah. We're at the back of the truck because I'm gonna make this more complicated. I actually have five matching wheels and tires. Uh, because of that, we're going to be doing a modified rear cross pattern thing. Here's how it works. I'm just gonna read this because I was super confused while doing it. The two back wheels go forward, but my front driver uh, wheel is now the spare and the spare moves to the rear passenger, and the front passenger is now the driver's side rear. Confusing? Yes, I actually got turned around while doing it and I had to check myself, and, and but I figured it out. But are tires expensive? Also yes, so this makes them last a tiny bit longer. Yay. While rotating your tires, it's a great time to inspect your brakes. Make sure your rotors and pads are clean and have no damage. Inspect all brake lines for cracking, damage, or leaks. My truck is only six months old, so all this was fine as it should be. While you're at it, take a look at your suspension. Check your ball joint and tie rod dust covers for cracks. Let's inspect some stuff in the engine bay. Make sure all your fluids are reading full. If they're a little low, like my coolant appeared to be, top them off to the full line. Checking your engine's air filter and the cabin air filter are incredibly easy on this Toyota. Please never pay someone to change these for you. It's super easy. For your engine's air filter, simply pop off the two latches and lift the top of the air box. My k &N filter is still in great shape. Cool thing about the k &N or TRD air filters is you can clean them, re-oil them, and put them back into service rather than buying new filters over and over. To check the cabin filter, open your glove box. Behind all the junk you have in there is a filter cover that you simply pop straight up and remove. Frankly, I was a bit shocked at how dirty my cabin filter was for only having 5,000 miles on this truck in total. Uh, I guess it has to do with all the off-roading I'm doing, so I again decided to opt for a serviceable k &N filter instead of the stock one. Okay, we've got all our maintenance done. Frankly, I think a little more thoroughly than the Toyota Care service would have been. So let's reset our maintenance required indicator light. First, start your engine. As you can see, my oil light is on. I'll hit the back button to get rid of that. With the D-pad on the right, go ahead and go all the way over to the right and then down to settings. Then go down to maintenance reset. It asks you if you wanna reset said maintenance and you do. So do that and that's it. Last maintenance item that I do every 5,000 miles is I use Tecron Complete Fuel System Cleaner to keep my engine running as 
clean as possible and to improve my gas mileage, making that as good as possible. Using this is incredibly easy. At your next fill up, just pour the whole bottle in, then fuel up, it's as easy as that. Well guys, thank you all very much for watching. You can check out the Overland DIY playlist for a whole bunch of videos about Sarge and other awesome vehicles that I work on. If you like this channel, please help it grow by liking, subscribing, sharing, bell notificating, other stuff I think there is. Thank you all again, I really appreciate it. So until next time, God bless and don't forget to do it yourself. Meh, meh. I made a clean spot.